everyone, and welcome back to Liz Sews. In today's installment of my Bra Making 101 series, we're going to be looking at sheer fabrics. So let's get into it. I tend to use sheer fabrics as sort of a workhorse in my bra making. If I'm ever working with a stretchy material and I need to make it stable, it's a sheer fabric to the rescue. Uh, if I wanna make a nice, light, ethereal summer bra, sheer fabric to the rescue. So the first fabric I'm gonna talk about is sheer cup lining. So sheer cup lining is really, really fabulous. I use this all the time. And it's another form of a trico fabric. So we talked about trico in a couple videos ago when I was talking about duoplex. And if you remember, duoplex has a very strong, stable position. It doesn't need to be lined because it's really strong and supportive on its own. That's kind of also the case with this sheer cup lining. So it's knitted in the same way in that it's a trico, but it's much lighter. Oftentimes you're gonna see something called a denier. Sheer cup lining tends to be around 15 denier. The lower the number, the smaller the number, the lighter the fabric is. I like to use something called a 15 denier stabilized sheer cup lining. So if you just get 15 denier trico, it will have a little bit more stretch in it. If you get the stabilized version, it is really, really firm and rigid. I like to use sheer cup linings just to make sheer bras themselves. So here is an example of a sheer bra that I've made with sheer cup lining. I have a relatively small bra cup, so I can get away with a single layer, but if you are a little bit larger or you have more weight that you're trying to support, I would go with two layers of sheer cup lining. So sheer cup lining is great on its own to make a bra like this, or as I mentioned, you can use it to line a stretchy fabric that you want to turn into a stable fabric. Because it's so lightweight, it doesn't really impact the feel on, uh, on your body at all. Um, it's nice and breathable and airy. So sheer cup lining is my general workhorse. When we're looking at sheer cup lining, it has like sort of a gridded fashion in that it has like very distinct squares uh, when you're looking at the fabric up close, but it's still a knit fabric, it's not woven, and it shouldn't really stretch all that much. A lot of times if I am making a duoplex bra or something like that, I might just line the bridge in sheer cup lining if that's the only thing I wanna make super, super strong and secure. I frequently use sheer cup lining as my tester material when I'm looking at a new bra pattern for several reasons. The first off being that it's relatively inexpensive. Sheer cup lining runs about $5 a yard, and out of that amount of fabric, I could easily get five, six, seven bras out of it. The other reason sheer cup lining is my go-to fabric when fitting a new pattern is because it tends to be my limiting fabric most often. So I like to make a lot of bras in lace or stuff like that. And so I use sheer cup lining as my stable fabric and then whatever I put on the outside, it doesn't matter if it stretches or not. So if I fit the bra to, with sheer cup lining, I know as long as I have sheer cup lining as my limiting fabric, mean, meaning the most stable fabric in the bra, whatever I put on the outside doesn't matter. So that way I can quickly change up into different fabrics, different materials outside, but make sure the inside of the bra is consistently staying at one stretch percentage. The second type of fabric we're gonna talk about in today is bra tulle. So here we have a bra tulle compared to sheer cup lining. You can see that the tulle is a lot lighter weight, has a lot more fluidity and movement to it. It feels a lot lighter on the skin than the sheer cup lining does. So bra tool is a lot different than the sort of like craft tools that you might be used to finding in your Michaels or Joann's or something like that. When you're looking at bra tool, it's going to have sort of like a honeycomb shape uh, and it should have mechanical stretch in one direction, quite a bit of mechanical stretch actually. And then in the other direction, it should be fairly secure and firm. So when I'm using bra tool to make a bra, 
because it has a lot of stretch in one direction, uh, I tend to double it up. So I'll have, I'll cut it one way with the stretch going this way, and then I'll turn the fabric 90 degrees, and I'll have the stretch going this way. And when you line those two layers up, they should be fairly stable because each of them is counteracted by a firm in the other layer of fabric. So even with two layers of bra tool, so let's see if we double this up two layers, it is still a lot more see-through than a single layer of sheer cup lining. So here's an example of a bra tool bra that I've made and you can see just like the sheer cup lining, um, it makes a really nice light and ethereal bra. This one is sort of like a pistachio green color. It barely shows up against my skin but it makes a nice and great summertime bra. I tend to not use bra tool as frequently as a lining just because I don't like to have to deal with double layers of this plus my fashion fabric or something like that. I tend to only use bra tool if it's going to be the main fabric in my bra. So bra tool does have a right and wrong side. And the best way to sort of find out which one is which is just to use the wrist, inner wrist of your hand and sort of rub the tool on there. Generally, I can tell one side is going to be a little bit softer and one side is going to be a little bit smoother. You wanna make sure that when you're making your bra, the smoother side of the fabric is what's against your skin because it can be a little bit itchy and irritating. But it is such a lovely fabric that it's totally worth that extra effort. Now, bra tool isn't always just a solid color like this. Lately, I've been seeing a lot of options in bra tool that have embroidered things on them. So here's an example of bra tool that has little bees embroidered on it. So for this bra, I didn't pay attention to the direction of stretch at all. I just fussy cut it out so that I could get the bees exactly where I wanted them to be. And then I used sheer cup lining on the inside because I knew that the sheer cup lining would be perfectly stable. So this bra is two layers. We have one layer of bra tulle and one layer of sheer cup lining versus this bra, which is two layers of bra tulle and this bra, which is a single layer of sheer cup lining. Bra tulle will give you a much softer, rounder appearance than making a bra with sheer cup lining, which tends to be a little bit more rigid so you might get more flat spots with this. So that's one thing to think about when you're trying to decide between bra tool or sheer cup lining. It can be a little fiddly to sew with, so I definitely wouldn't recommend this as like your first bra um, because it's almost like sewing with air. As you can see from the fabric here, it's just, it is a fun little fluffy cloud. But it is a fabric that I think that you guys should know about and, and think about using once you feel a little bit more confident in your bra sewing ability. So that's all I have to talk about today. See you next time. Mm -hmm.